大家好，我是 Olive Branch 的 Alan。So today's video, we're going to be talking about heart rate and how that can impact your training and losing fat. So let's first talk about the biology about the heart.、Um, the heart is basically just a pump, and every time your heart beats, the blood goes out of your heart and through your arteries into your cells and the rest of your body. And so when we talk about heart rate, it's how many beats per minute. And so we're going to be talking about the ranges:、um, what is a high heart rate, what is a low heart rate. So why do people care about the heart rate? Well, they're really thinking about is how healthy、um, is their heart? Is their heart performing well? And if you know the heart is just a pump, then one way that we can measure its performance is the heart rate. But is that really the only metric? Well, the cardiovascular system, however, is not just determined by how many beats per minute the heart does. More importantly, is the cardiac output. In other words, how much blood is your heart really pumping? If your heart Beats faster, then yes, more blood will come out. But another important metric is each pump, how much volume of blood is actually pushing out into the arteries, and that's called stroke volume. So cardiac output is the main performance indicator、um, for a cardiovascular system, and it's made up of the product of the heart rate and the stroke volume. You multiply these two together to get the cardiac output. So I'll be talking about stroke volume in a future video, since this video we're mainly concerned about is the heart rate. And so the heart rate is primarily controlled by the autonomic nervous system, which means you have very little control over it. However, there are some extreme athletes like free divers who have learned to control their heartbeats by really lowering it down through mindfulness or through breathing. Now that's another extreme topic that we'll talk about again in another video. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to be talking about heart rate for the general person. In which case, you have very little control on that heart rate. So, what are the ranges of your heart rate? How low can it go? How high can it go?、Um, well, the simplest、uh, scenario is when you're sleeping. That's when your body's at rest, when you're burning the fewest amount of energy, and that is your lowest resting heart rate. Um, and for usually people who are quite fit、um, or healthy, it's, it's around the 50 to 60 range.、Um, if you're not as fit, the resting heart rate might be a little higher. And so this is why、um, taking your pulse、um, when you go to the doctor's office is an indicator of how how efficient your heart is. If you're at rest and it's still beating quite high, then you you might not have a very strong heart. For the maximum range, there's a very general formula that you can use to calculate that, and that's basically 220 minus your age. Let's just say you're 20 years old, then it's simply 200 minus 20. Your maximum heart rate that you can reach is 200. This is a very rough、uh, formula, and it's it's proven not to be the case. It's not really true.、Um, there are a lot other formulas that are a little bit more complicated that you can use,、um, but then you have to remember a really long and complicated formula. This is actually pretty good for For our general ballpark, so when you're taking your maximum heart rate, you need to take percentages of that to determine、uh, training zones, which we'll be talking about next. So when you're using heart rate or monitoring heart rate for high intensity training, you can look at it to determine how hard you're pushing yourself. How close are is your heart rate to your maximum heart rate, and how long can you sustain it for? Of course, higher the better in terms of high intensity, and that actually is kind of what determines high intensity. And so, when you finish your set, how quickly your heart rate can drop back down is another indication of how well conditioned your body is. So, some people are concerned that if they train at a high intensity, that their heart rate will be too high, and that might not be safe for them.、Um, well, it's not really、uh, an issue if you're a healthy individual with no heart conditions.、Um, then you can train it hard. Um, as hard as you can sustain it, because your body will naturally want to slow you down through pain、um, and discomfort.、Um, but if you're well conditioned, then you should be able to push it quite hard for a while,、um, unless you start to feel dizziness, nausea, maybe a bit of headache, or your ears are starting to ring. Then maybe it's a good idea to slow it down or stop. Um, however, if you do have a heart condition、um, or other health complications, then maybe you should consult a doctor first before training so hard. Okay, so this is where things start to get a little controversial.、Um, when people are trying to train、uh, to burn fat,、um, a lot of the wisdom is that they say to train at seventy percent of your maximum heart rate. So again, if you're a twenty-year-old, your maximum heart rate is two hundred. Then your seventy percent maximum heart rate is about one forty. And so they say to train at 140 beats per minute、um, is ideal for fat loss. Now the question is why. So the conventional wisdom is that they say 
above 70% of your maximum heart rate, your body starts to burn carbs or sugar. Um, whereas at 70% or lower, it burns fat for fuel. Now, the physiology is like this, guys. When you're doing exercise, you're constantly burning both carbs and fat at the same time. Um, and yes, at a lower intensity, you are burning primarily fat. So the percentage of calories burnt or energy used is more on the fat side. And then as the intensity starts to pick up, fat drops, sugars ramp up because sugar is a high octane fuel, which means it provides a lot of power. So when your body senses that you need more power, then it starts to uh, suck in more carbs to burn it for, for energy. Whereas fat is a kind of like a low burn um, where you can sustain it for a long time. So your body does know when your intensity picks up, your heart rate jumps, then it starts to switch fuel. But the main point is, guys, if you're trying to burn fat, but you're doing 70% of your maximum heart rate, like a brisk walk or a light jog, um, your overall calories burnt is quite low overall. And that's the main fact. Although you might be burning primarily fat, but you might just be burning, um, let's just say, 10 units of fat or 10 calories of fat. Whereas if you do a high intensity exercise, although you're burning primarily carbs, you're also burning fat, but the overall number of calories burnt might be 500 or 600 calories burnt, which means you're actually burning even more calories uh, of fat and sugar. In my class, I actually focus so much on high intensity um, because I do want to burn more calories. I want to I want to really push the body so your heart rate will be high for a long time, um, and so you're really pushing that. Um, high intensity uh, lever you're pulling that really hard you do burn a lot of your sugar but that's actually what my goal is I want you to burn all your sugar so the harder the work you work the more sugar you burn and the goal is to actually deplete all your glycogen all your sugar stores so that eventually your body starts to switch over to fat burning mode when all your your glycogen is depleted then your body can actually still burn fat for fuel um, especially when combined with a low carb diet um, then your body really does burn a lot more fat that way. And again, lastly, guys, the, this point does not also mention um, the benefit of high-intensity training is the hormonal changes that's happening in your body. Because when you're doing high-intensity training, um, you actually upregulate um, your insulin uh, sensitivity, bringing in more sugar into your muscle cells so you can burn it off. Um, human growth hormone goes up, which furthers uh, fat loss, as well as uh, lipase, which is a fat-burning enzyme. These are all going up as you're doing high-intensity training that you might not get when you do low-intensity, steady-state style of training. So guys, my final recommendation is that um, heart rate monitoring, um, it's information, again, so it's another data point that can, can help you make decisions, but it's really not going to influence you too much in terms of um, if you should be burning um, X amount of fat at 70% or if you could go to 80% or, or 50%, you should really just focus on going as hard as you can, as long as you can. And as long as it's a, a well-designed workout that's safe, then you shouldn't get injured. And lastly, remember that it's all about the hormones. If you're trying to really burn fat, you need to uh, make an exercise that really affects your hormonal levels, and that's high-intensity training. So that's it for today's video, guys. If you have more interest in learning more about uh, heart rate or the stroke volume I mentioned earlier, or even heart rate variability and how that can affect training, um, just leave it down in the comments below. Of course, if you have any other questions or feedback, again, please also leave them below. And I'll see you next time. Something I gotta know.